to your innocence Hold on to your sweetness Keep a grip on the feeling you get from your tips on your neck Almost makes a slip Cause you can't hold on to everything Some things run Take a look at me All you want It was for me to stay But I was already leaving Sex Positive Podcast, Let episode number 9 for July the 6th, 2015. Thank you guys for checking out our videos. You can find us on YouTube, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, and soon iTunes will be coming along. Um, the band that you just heard was Shannon MacArthur, and you can check their music out at shannonmacarthur.com. I'll link that in the show notes. I really appreciate uh, them throwing down their music to be able to help me out with the podcast and kind of get it to a broader audience. Um, please enjoy an interview from Jen and her wife, and please subscribe to us on YouTube, Stitcher, or SoundCloud. Thank you guys very much. Bye. Hi, my name's Jen, and I'm sitting here with my wife, Molly. Uh, we live in Kent, Ohio. Um, I'm not sure where, how far this podcast goes, so hi, that's us. Um, we were married in uh, Washington, D.C. in uh, March of 2013. And now, given the Supreme Court ruling last Friday, we thought that it would be timely to discuss the way that the ruling um, practically and personally affects us. It is. Uh, it's kind of ironic. It's funny. It's it's not long enough. It's it's um, too short. It's all those things that two years and, and several months later that were finally counted is, is legally recognized here in our home state of Ohio. Uh, we certainly wish that it could have been sooner. And in that time period where we were legally married in um, several states um, and not legally married then, not legally recognized um, in many other states, including our home state, it actually caused a lot of problems for us. And there were a lot of practical things that were made to be very difficult and um, some things that we were unable to be a, a part of um, and other things that we had to maybe do twice um, or do differently in some ways than our other uh, fellow colleagues and neighbors and, and members of the community um, that happened to, to either be single or just um, you know married but um, in a heterosexual relationship. Um, some of those things include... Well, one of the first things um, that I'd like to mention is the insurance. That's something that, you know, a lot of people might not consider, especially if you're in a heterosexual relationship. So um, I was at a job where, first, there there wasn't any um, benefit for my significant other, for my spouse, because she was a woman. So I um, found a different job that offered domestic partner benefits because being in Ohio, even though we were married, she wasn't recognized as my spouse. So I had to find um, something and luckily I, I was able to get a position so that she could be on my insurance as my domestic partner. Um, but what people might not realize then is even with that, um, though we were thankful, uh, being a domestic partner, it costs more than being a spouse. So we have been paying more for insurance as a family um, just because she wasn't recognized as my spouse even though legally in many other states she would have been. So that was just one thing that you know we're thankful that will be changing very soon now that the ruling has come down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, a really important one. The the insurance and the protection of people for their health and safety um, is just vital. You know, frankly, whether you're uh, gay, straight, lesbian, you know, whoever you are, that it's super important. Um, another really big important one. One, uh, as an American, is, is paying taxes, of course. And um, as you well know, you know, most people have to pay taxes on the, on the federal, the state, and the, the local level. And that was a, a difficult thing for us because on the federal level, 
getting married in Washington, D.C., uh, we were recognized uh, once DOMA essentially had had fallen, um, if you will, then in uh, parts of DOMA um, and the Prop 8 case that was heard uh, back in um, June 2013. That's when the um, the ruling was actually announced. Um, it was actually heard in March of 2013, ironically the same week that we went to Washington, D.C. to get married. Um, so that was a pretty neat thing. Uh, but unfortunately, even though the federal government then recognized us um, come when the uh, ruling was actually announced in June, still we were not recognized at the state level here in Ohio. And so basically what that meant in terms of taxes uh, was that on the federal level, we were considered married, so for federal taxes we were married, but on the state level and the local level here in Ohio we were considered a single independent people. And so not only were we not able to take advantage of all the tax um, appropriate benefits that come with being a married couple in the state of Ohio, it also meant that it was much more complicated as we had to do our taxes twice, uh, one for the federal level as a married couple and then both for the state and local level as separate independent single people. Um, it also means that it, it costs more money because when you have to uh, then, you know, get the services of an accountant or other tax professionals, uh, financial people involved, all of that costs money. And so um, that is also another difficulty that um, gay and lesbian uh, folks in the state of Ohio and other states that were not as welcoming um, had to deal with. So that is a, a difficult thing that as we move forward where we are legally recognized in Ohio, uh, hopefully will be remedied uh, very soon. Yeah, and then um, a third point, um, something that's going to change for us now, is that we don't have to carry a lot of legal documents with us. Um, so for the past, uh, well, we've been together for about six years. So for the past six years, we have been carrying um, living will, power of attorney for health care and for finances. Um, we have all of these paperwork, um, all of the legal documents drawn up, and we carry them with us um, whenever we travel just for fear that something could happen, one of us could end up in the hospital, um, and then the other person could be denied rights, um, spousal rights, that again, if you're in a heterosexual relationship, you might not even think about, because of course, your, your wife, your husband can um, be there in the hospital if something happens to you. Um, so just to plan for the worst, we had uh, those documents with us at all times, and so hopefully now that is something that we will have to worry about a lot less. And even when we would have those documents, it was scary. We had been told by uh, numerous different attorneys that even carrying those, um, if we were to get hurt, be in a car accident, for example, uh, depending on what hospital a person was taken to, in what state, in what county, um, if it was a, a particular hospital that might have been private or uh, related to a particular uh, religious institution, um, let's say, for example, um, that they could end up having some power in the moment, if you will, and uh, when people are in an emergency emergency health and safety situations, a moment can, can make all the difference, quite frankly. And we had seen some very scary stories uh, about people unfortunately being in accidents and then ultimately dying and uh, the spouse, um, the person that they loved more than anybody in the world, was unable to spend those last few precious moments uh, with that person uh, before they did pass away. And so that was something really important uh, to Jen and I and uh, we are very, very thankful that that is uh, no longer the case as of the Supreme Court ruling of, of last Friday. So those were more practical um things that affect us, but on a more personal level, it's just nice to be counted as a human. It's nice that our relationship, our our love is considered just like anybody else's. And we realize, you know, we're not naive enough to believe that, you know, this ruling is going to change everybody's hearts and minds and, you know, there will be backlash and differing opinions. But it's nice that we live in a nation that now federally recognizes us and treats us like everybody else and love is love to us and we love each other and I guess my hope is that just listening to this you get a sense that you know it we're it's just practical um we're a regular married couple like anybody else you know we cook dinner we you know take out the trash we you know do normal things we pay our taxes um and so now I hope that a lot of those other practical things um, become more fair for us. 
So thanks so much for uh, for listening to us and being willing to uh, have us here today. Thanks for listening to our story. And uh, as we step one step closer to a more perfect nation, um, let this freedom and equality be good for not only the uh, members of the LGBT community, um, but for people everywhere. Because equality and fairness and justice um, is good not only for the members of any particular minority group, uh, but it's good for everybody. It's good for everybody. So thanks for everybody out there that it's a supporter um, of folks that are part of minority groups, and thanks for um, everybody who is, is kind of uh, maybe becoming more aware. Um, maybe you didn't realize that one of your favorite teachers or your neighbor down the street um, was gay or lesbian, and maybe now with this ruling from the Supreme Court, perhaps they will feel more open and welcome uh, and more part of their community to be able to share those types of things. So um, with that said, we want to thank you again for listening, and uh, we hope you all have a great day. Hold on to this last kiss Let it linger on your lips And I'll make this goodbye quick Leave you with no regrets You can't Everything, some things run Take a look at me, all you want It was for me to stay But I was already